Hello, it's Joe the CRM chap here and welcome to today's video uh, which is continuing my series all about Microsoft exam PL600. Uh, this is the solution architect exam uh, for those who are looking to validate their skills uh, uh, at a very sort of high level when it comes to the Power Platform. And the topic of today's video is going to be data loss prevention policies or sometimes referred to as DLP policies. And what we can use these for within the Power Platform is to control exactly which connectors we want to allow our different sort of makers and developers to work with as part of our Canvas apps and our Power Automate Cloudflows. And we can also set up different sort of groupings so that if there's maybe a mix and match of different connectors that we don't allow. So maybe, for example, people are wanting to connect up to their own personal Dropbox and then also our CRM system, maybe to do something naughty like pinch all of our prospect data. Uh, using DLP policies, we can sort of set those up and prevent that from occurring. So in order to get started to, and work with DLP policies, we first of all need to make sure that we're in the Power Platform Admin Center. And then what we can do, if we expand out the Policies tab down here, we'll see that we've got an option here for data policies. So when we click into here, we can see that we've got an existing policy that's been set up as part of a previous um, a previous test or setup. Um, and what we can do is click on the button at the top up here uh, to create a brand new one. So we need to always make sure we give our policy a descriptive name. So let's call this my PL600 policy, like so. Whoops. Click on the next screen. And then here we'll then see a list of all of the different connectors that we either allow or don't allow in the particular organization. And we can start to categorize them either as sort of business, i.e. our core sensitive data connectors, our non-business connectors, uh, where maybe the data is less sensitive, and any specific connectors that we've chosen to block entirely. Um, so in our case, we could maybe say, okay, well, because we're using maybe uh, Microsoft Dataverse quite extensively, we want to ensure that both of these uh, have been categorized as business connectors and it could be that we want to prevent people from maybe connecting out to, you know, Excel documents and things like that, um, you know, from our different apps and our services. So what we can maybe look to do uh, is find a particular connector that we can block on here. So maybe I want to, for example, uh, block the Excel connector. Uh, and also as well, I can just continue to go through the different the list down here to see all the different options, um, find all of the connectors that I want. You'll see on here every single connector that has been published out onto uh, onto app source by various different developers so it may be prudent to occasionally just go back into here review the latest list um, uh, every so often just to make sure that your policy is up to date once we've defined our rules for our different connectors we can then hit on the next button down here uh, we can also look to adding custom connectors as well so if we're wanting to maybe have some policies that apply to those then we can also look to incorporate these as part of them as well then the next tab, what we can do is then define the scope of this. And we can set this so that maybe it applies globally across all environments on the tenant, or it could be that we want to have very specific uh, controls over a particular environment. Um, so in this case, I can click on add multiple environments like so. Click on the next button. Then I'm just going to select my PL600 environment down here, add this to the policy, and this will be the only one that basically takes effect uh, and runs through what we've built out here. Click next one final time. We can then review the core details, everything down here. Click on the create policy. And this will now take effect in the environment that we've chosen. Uh, you know, um, we sometimes may need to wait just five, 10 minutes just for it to take effect. Uh, and then from there, our policy will then be effective. With the policy created and ready to go, we can now uh, give it a test. Um, so the easiest way to do this is by jumping across into the maker portal at the top up here. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a brand new sort of cloud flow. It uh, doesn't really matter in terms of the type of flow, in terms of the trigger, so we'll probably just choose an instant cloud flow in this case uh, that's maybe manually triggered. Um, so if we now start adding in the various different connectors that we've specified in the policy, so maybe first of all we want to put in maybe a dataverse, so maybe we want to uh, list rows, maybe list all accounts that's in our dataverse environment. Uh, like so. So, so far so good. We can see there's no warnings or or errors at the top up here like so. We do get a, well, we do get a warning about the using no data filter, but nothing relating to uh, the DLP policy just yet. However, if we were to add on the Excel connector, and in this case, it'll be the Excel Online OneDrive connector, because that's the one we've blocked. Um, so I'm just gonna do a step here where, we, where I just find an Excel document that's already 
um, already saved down here and we'll just give it a name of a new worksheet test like so. If we now go up to the flow checker up here, we'll see that we now get two specific errors. We are notified that we are mixing and matching connectors which are restricted based on the policy that we've defined. So if I was to try and go off and save this flow now, uh, I'm going to be blocked straight away. I'm going to be prevented from actually saving the flow, from, from switching it on or doing any action against it until I fix these issues or until the specific policy that's targeting this flow has been amended to allow the scenario that we're working with. So in order for me to proceed, what I would need to do is remove this uh, action down here for the block connector like so. We'll see now that the error disappears entirely. I can then hit the save button and this flow is then allowed uh, based on the policy that we've defined. So using DLP policies, we can have very sort of fine-tuned control over exactly you know, what connectors are being used, not only in a single environment, but across the entire tenant. So you know, we, when we're using the Power Platform, you know, particularly as a solution architect, we want to be encouraging people to you know, use what we've got here and you know, mix and match connectors based on the scenario that we're working with. Uh, but we do sometimes need to have a, a bit of common sense. We need to recognize and realize that there could be some risk to the organization if we were to permit certain connectors or to allow people to do certain things. So therefore with DLP policies, we can hopefully try and uh, have that nice sort of balancing act where we are you know, uh, blocking things where it makes sense to do so, but ultimately ensuring that people are not restricted and are able to go out and build the various different automations and apps they need uh, to solve the business problems that they're facing. So that wraps it up for this video today. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, as part of your preparation for sitting the PL600 exam, please do check out the other videos on this channel and in this series. Uh, we cover lots of different topics relating to the exam itself, all of which is designed to help you uh, get prepared and obviously um, be sort of bite sized sort of chunks that you can sort of dip into any particular point. Um, so, yeah, uh, all it leaves me to say is have a great day ahead and see you again next time.